All right, we've spent a lot of time wallowing in our room. Let's open the closet. And assuming that a psycho clown doesn't jump out and confess to being the origami killer, let's open the box. Madison saw inside the box and uh, saw origami figures, but somehow Ethan is more suspicious of himself than Madison is of him. Madison just wants to help him escape the police. Maybe she has a serial killer fetish. Are you prepared to kill someone to save your son? Brad Silver, 6784 Longway Road, Lexington. Kill him, send a picture, and get your reward. And now I'm going to kill someone with my gun in hand. Make sure I have the hollow points loaded. We haven't seen Scott in a while. I wonder what he's up to. I really thought he was going to run into Jaden and they were going to help each other by sharing clues, but at this point it seems less and less likely because it's only a few hours before the death of Sean. I don't know what's happening, the sound totally glitched out. Now we're getting sound back again, but we're not getting sound track. I'm actually going to um, try going back to the main menu and see whether the game hangs again. I think this might be the same glitch that we were getting earlier at the very beginning when uh, Ethan stepped out onto his balcony. Now we're getting like the orchestral soundtrack again. Continue, Manfred. Let's do that. orchestration and everything. I knew we were missing something from this scene. Manfred! We're back Manfred. with Lauren. Anybody home? He's got antique typewriters. This is um, maybe the shop where the killer purchased the typewriter that was used in order to send the ransom letters. Not the ransom letters, the, uh, the warning letters quoting from the Pied Piper. exactly what I'm thinking. At this point in the story, like, the theories for each possible suspect being the killer are becoming, like, more credible instead of less, because I've completely discounted Gordy until, um, the interview with Charles Kramer, but now Charles is trying to hide something. I was crazy with her coming. She's trying to help out, but she just gets in the way. I'll have to talk to her later. Is that Manfred? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? <laughs> Scott? No. This is Scott! Oh, yes, of course. Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, my age. 
which time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. Manfred is a jolly old soul, like oh, old King Cole. Oh, are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private Yeah, I knew this guy was an ex-cop. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I'm just the thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Manfred is so jolly. He speaks like he's a Winnie the Pooh character, but I can't really figure out which one. And now the phone is ringing. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Where is the phone? Is it back here? I want to answer it, but I don't know where it is. There was a white phone back here, but this is a black phone that we're looking for. Oh, there it is. Don't worry, I'll get it. I didn't get it fast enough, so Lauren is getting it. Hello? Yes, this is Manfred, but he's not available right now. Can you call back this afternoon? Thanks. Lauren playing with. Is this the magnifying glass? Here we go. Wrong way again. One magnifying glass coming right up. Thanks. Well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. The Royal Five. And yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. So we're looking for a suspect who drives a 1983 Chevrolet Malibu and owns a Royal Five typewriter. Are there many places around that can repair one of these? I bought the company's entire stock of spare parts for a song in 64. Uh, well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. Now, anybody around here who has one that actually works has been to see me at one time or another. You keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. Well, at least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. 
Give me two minutes, and I'll be right back with the list. Is Ethan Myers on the list? I think the killer's been here. If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. I assume Scott Shelby isn't on the list, or else he wouldn't have brought Lauren here. Oh, that's the thing she was playing with before. It's a ballerina. Is that like a music box? I can't hear any music. I can't look at it. Look how many clocks this guy Manfred has. Manfred went into his office. Let's take a look. I wonder if he has a cuckoo clock. It would be appropriate. That one typewriter looks so raggedy. It's all disheveled. Oh, this is the bathroom. It's not Manfred's office. This is ridiculous. Sir? Hello? There was literally nobody else in the shop. No one could have been hiding back here and, like, attacked Manfred. I assume Manfred, yeah, he's dead. His eyes aren't moving. There's a pool of blood around his head. Oh my god. He's dead. Oh. This didn't happen, though. This is just like when Ethan was uh, crawling inside that duct in the uh, power plant. There's no way that uh, anyone could have conceivably been in the same room as him to like shut the door behind him. The window's open. Someone came in through the window and then Scott? killed Man Manfred and then left again without making any noise. Is it because all the clocks struck the hour at the exact same time? Is that the implication? I think he wants us to be a scapegoat. We gotta get the hell out of here. The implication is that uh. We have nothing to do with his death, and we're just here when it happened. The killer silenced Manfred so Scott couldn't get a clue when he timed the crime, so the sound of the clock would cover up his footsteps. So what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints and everything we touched since we came in. <laughs> everything we touched. The police are going to be here any minute. Now I have to remember everything we touched. What are you doing? If someone comes in, we're going to be in trouble. This man has a account books. He must be looking for his royals when he was killed. Alright, she's going to take the account books. That's good. She better take them. Alright, I remember I went to the bathroom, so let's get that out of the way. Bathroom door we have to uh, clean. Both sides of it. Good. He just touched it again with his, with his hand after cleaning it, but I, I'm gonna let that one slide because I assume that was not uh, intentional. We didn't touch anything at all back here. Did we? The white phone. I don't think I touched the white phone. Yeah, I did, because uh, that's the phone that I picked up the receiver when and hung it up because the police had been called, okay. That's the only thing back here we touched. Over here, we touched the magnifying glass, which is right here. Oh no, this is that other phone. Lauren touched that. Now the magnifying glass and the whiskey bottle should be on a Man Manfred's counter over in the other corner of the room. We need to make sure to get both of those. The glasses too? Okay. The whiskey bottle, the glasses, and the magnifying glass. He could just take the whiskey bottle with him instead of cleaning it off. It might help him. 
keep his spirits high during the rest of this investigation. Not much longer. We also have to get, uh, the last thing we need to get, well we need to get the front door and we need to get that music box. Music box. And on the front door and we're good. There's everything we touched. That's it. We're done. You know this? Yes. I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from finding us. Come on, let's go. The window. It shows me the window because um I closed the window when the killer had uh, escaped through it. Ugh. So, you claim the victim was killed while you were in his shop. And now I'm being interrogated. Yes, he went to get something in his office. A few minutes later, I went in to see if he was okay. And that's when I found him. You should have called the police immediately, Mr. Shelby. Saved us dragging your ass down here. Listen, we had nothing to do with this murder. We were only there by coincidence. I just wanted to spare myself a few hours declaring I didn't see anything to a police officer. P.I. or not, Mr. Shelby, don't leave town. And if you end up next door to any more dead bodies, remember to call us. Okay? Ah, uh, Shelby and Blake are old buddies. Wrong time, wrong place. You know what it's like. I should have cleaned everything except for the music box no because Lauren only touched that. Scott didn't touch that. And then I could have uh, Thanks, pinned the crime on Lauren. Yeah, that would have been hilarious. You want anything at the moment? Hang on, I need a moment.